Good Wednesday afternoon, Midlands. Time right now is 3.20 on this Wednesday. I'm Chief Meteorologist Efren Afonte. I want to give you an update on now Hurricane Adalia that we are still tracking. And on visible satellite, you can see a very pronounced spin. The latest information as of 2 o'clock, the wind sustained currently at 90 miles an hour, gusting to 105. Its position right now is, as you can see, just moving to the west of the west coast of Florida. And no doubt that is already starting to set up pretty, pretty good as far as a symmetric hurricane. It is forecast to become a tropical, a, a category two hurricane uh, by later on this afternoon. I said Wednesday, sorry folks, today's Tuesday, tomorrow's Wednesday. So by later on this afternoon, it'll become a category two hurricane winds of possibly 105 miles an hour. And by sometime tomorrow morning is a category three with winds at 125 miles an hour. It is expected to make landfall very likely as a category three. As it makes its way through, Florida and into southern Georgia by Wednesday night. It will be a tropical storm, winds sustained at about 65 miles an hour, and from that point making its way through South Carolina before it comes back out just east of the Outer Banks and then heads out to sea. Now again, we've got this set up in which we're looking at the timeline as far as affecting the Palmetto State uh, as far as crossing through sometime Wednesday afternoon through sometime Thursday morning. So it will be moving very fast at this point once it gets through into Georgia and then making its way through South Carolina. But again, all indications is that it will still be at least a tropical storm of characteristics at that point. Now, one computer model is indicating that at this time frame, which would be late Wednesday night into early Thursday morning, we could have at least Tropical storm force winds extending from the Grand Strand through the low country, coastal and coastal inland. And that includes also parts of the western, southwestern Midland communities. Well, spaghetti models are also indicating that not only is the track still the same, but we've talked about spaghetti models before. And we go by what the general consensus is, even with the official track from the National Hurricane Center. But as you can see, and keep in mind, Adalia has not made landfall yet. Some of the models are indicating that the track may actually shift even more to the west. Well, that's the concern we've been watching over the last two days. And over the last two days, it has shifted from off coast to on the coast, now a little bit more coastal inland. So there's still a lot of debate whether this track will shift as uh, the National Hurricane Center updates it at 5 o'clock. And for that reason, we already have tropical storm watches in effect for only Midland counties of Clarendon and Orangeburg. That goes until Friday afternoon. Tropical storm warnings are in effect for all of the low country, all the way coastal inland. And then, of course, the tropical storm watch for portions of the Grand Strand. But again, the tropical storm watch for the Midlands is only for Orangeburg and Clarendon County. Now, this is what we're expecting as far as winds. This model will at least depict the intensity of the winds, the timing is going to fluctuate. As we get into Wednesday afternoon, tropical storm force winds are already hitting the low country and then coastal inland low country. It'll start proceeding into portions of the southern half of the Midlands Wednesday afternoon and into Wednesday night. But the thing is that by Wednesday evening, just the tropical storm force winds alone, it's going to be covering a good portion of the Midlands all the way to the Grand Strand and all points further south. The intensity of the tropical storm force winds, the strongest winds that will be over 39 to approaching maybe 65 to 70 miles an hour will be basically along I-95 all the way to the low country, pretty much from Georgetown County all the way down to Jasper. As it continues to move through, we will still have windy conditions, although Adelia will probably already be sailing out into the Grand Strand. By Thursday morning, we could still have winds in the PD and the Grand Strand exceeding 45 miles an hour. And then from the southern Midlands all the way down to the low country coastal, winds will start tapering off to about 30 to 35. And again, that's a projection as far as the wind gusts. Now, there is an increasing risk of heavy rainfall. The Weather Prediction Center just updated this as meteorologist Corey Smith just indicated a few minutes ago. For the state, most of the upstate has got a marginal risk for heavy rainfall. Along in areas from the PD into the CSRA and the Northern Midlands, it's basically all areas on each side of I-20 
all the way into the upstate, the PD, and the Savannah River. But south of I-20, you're talking about all the way down to the Grand Strand and the Low Country. There is a moderate risk. We haven't had one of these in a very long time. A moderate risk of heavy rainfall. And the tune of heavy rainfall is what we're walking in because we're expecting, we've already had showers and storms in the Midlands and parts of the, uh, uh, the upstate already today. So this is going to be rainfall that's going to be occurring between now and then right about midnight tonight. As the system moves through, and Adelia's tropical storm characteristics move through conservatively, most areas along and north of I-20 could experience anywhere from an inch to three inches of rainfall into the upstate, maybe an inch at most. But along and south of I-20, say from Lee County through probably the northern portion of Calhoun, lower Richland, and it's as extreme southern Lexington, western, northwestern Orangeburg County, and then everybody south of that could experience anywhere from five to seven, eight inches of rainfall total. Localized areas may get up to nine inches, especially in the areas of coastal inland low country and then into portions of the extreme inland Grand Strand. Now, again, that's just an estimate, but because of that, with the exception of the far northern portions of the upstate, just about all of South Carolina is under, under a flood watch until at least Thursday afternoon. Even though we're expecting the rain to start tapering off here in the Midlands, by about midnight, we're still going to be having at least a flood watch in effect. What does that mean? We could be experiencing that heavy rainfall that could cause flash flooding, especially in low-lying areas as well as areas that are prone to flooding. In addition, again, this is a tropical cyclone, and tropical cyclones have a history of producing severe weather well before the eye or the center of the tropical cyclone gets anywhere near any particular location. So there is the possibility of severe weather as well on Wednesday. It's a marginal risk in portions along and south of I-20 from Aiken County all the way up to Dillon. But from that point all the way through, so you're talking about the southern, southeastern Midlands, all of the low country in the Grand Strand, there is a slight risk for severe weather. And what we're looking at is the potential of severe thunderstorms that have the capability of producing 60 mile an hour wind gusts. Not so much in the tune of hail, but keep in mind, this is a tropical cyclone. This is gonna be a tropical storm when it gets through us. So we're looking at very likely that there be the possibility of tornado warnings, at least along the coastline of South Carolina, but it's not out of the question that there may be tornado warnings associated with this tropical storm as it makes its way through South Carolina, further inland along the coastal inland of the Grand Strand Low Country, as well as the southern and southeastern Midland communities. Now again, just a recap of what we have for the Midlands alone, a tropical storm watch is in effect for uh, Clarendon, and at least the eastern third, not all of it, the eastern third of Orangeburg County until Friday afternoon. Uh, we are going to be experiencing the winds associated with it. In addition, pretty much everyone south of I-20, there is a moderate or a level three risk of heavy rainfall that will produce flash flooding or flooding, and it'll be persistent in time a marginal risk for everybody along and on each side of I-20. So there is also a possibility that we're gonna be experiencing heavy rainfall from that and that alone. And the computer models are indicating for the Midlands alone that conservatively we can see upwards of one to two or one to three inches in the Northwest Midlands. From I-20, from Lee County all the way down to Aiken, we could have anywhere from three to five inches of rainfall, but especially areas south of that from Sumter, Lower Richland, Calhoun, Clarendon, and Orangeburg County, we could get upwards of seven to eight inches of localized can hit nine inches of rainfall. And it's all gonna be coming down at pretty much the same time, sometime mid to late morning through late Wednesday night. So that's important to understand that all this rainfall is gonna be coming at the same time. And of course, with that flood watch in effect for all of us here in the Midlands until Thursday afternoon. And of course, the risk for severe weather, that's gonna be covering at least most of our Midland communities along and south of I-20 with the possibility of 60 mile an hour wind gusts if the storms are severe 
and the possibility of at least tornado warnings in conjunction with this tropical cyclone. And let me add that when we deal with tropical cyclones or hurricanes or, tor or uh, tropical storms, these type of storms come before all the wind and rain comes through. So the timing of these will very likely be very early tomorrow morning to about late morning midday before the heavy rainfall and the strong winds come through. Again, we're monitoring Hurricane Idalia very closely. We'll continue to monitor this. We will have updates in every newscast tonight on News 19 at Friends at 5, 6, 7, and 11 o'clock. And we'll have updates on a, online here at WLTX. We'll see you for Friends at 5 later on this afternoon. I'm Chief Meteorologist Efren Afonte.